Hey guys, Fred here. Welcome back, AF Math Engineer. Welcome to the channel. And uh, we're going to do a quick video for you on virtual work. And we're going to use virtual work to determine the deflection uh, at a point of a truss. So it's very similar to the um, to the method of beams. Okay, so uh, I'll leave a link down below in the in the comments. It'll be pinned. So if you want to check out how to do virtual work for beams, we also have virtual work for frames. Now we're going to do it for trusses. And the only difference, essentially, for for a truss is that in a truss uh, situation, you know, all of our members are pinned and we don't have any moments being developed. So we have purely axial forces, right, in, in each member. So with that being said, there's no I in, a, in the truss formula. Now we've replaced that with A, okay? So, and we have the F here, which is the axial force and then the length. So for a truss, we're working with um, the forces in the, in the members, the length of the members and the cross-sectional area of those members, as well as the modulus elasticity. Cool. So um, let's take a look at this problem. So we're asked to determine the horizontal deflection at C of the truss shown using the virtual work method. Okay, so uh, they want us to find the, the horizontal deflection. So essentially, how much is this uh, deflection at C? And due to the loading that's given here, which is simply just 40 kip down. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get started. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying the channel, if you like this video, if you like our videos at all, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We do really appreciate it. Cool, so um, this involves, um, if, if you're familiar with the virtual work, if not, it's no problem. We need to split this system up into two separate systems with the virtual work method. We need to apply a unit load at the point that we're considering, and then we need to um, also just uh, take the external loadings as they are, and we need to calculate all the members of, uh, all the forces in each member of both systems. We're gonna come down here for the virtual system, okay? And I'm just going to kind of split these. And this is going to be the real system. Okay, so we have our real system and we have our virtual system. So our virtual system is where we apply our one kip point load at the point that we want we want to consider. So um, it's going to be at point C. And because we're looking for horizontal deflection, we're going to apply it uh, in, in the right direction. And whatever answer that we get, if it's, for example, a, to, a negative answer, then we know that our deflection is to the left and vice versa. In this question, it's pretty obvious that the truss is going to be moving to the right. And uh, let's just draw what this looks like, okay? So we're going to redraw our, our truss system here, okay? And we take off all the external loading, so we take off this 40 kip, and then we add, because it's horizontal, as I said, we add a 1 kip force to the right, okay? This is point C. This is A and B, and that's essentially it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the method of joints and we're going to solve for the force, the axial force in each member. Now I'm not gonna do that in this video because you know, um, this is just how to solve this problem. We've done videos on joint method before. It's gonna take a long time. Um, I suggest that you practice this, um, go through it, try and solve for the forces in each member here, use the method of joints and, and see what you get, okay? So I'm just going to write down uh, what the values are, okay? so. Okay, for AC, we have tension, we have 3.75 kip, okay, and at B, we have compression here of 3.25, and at AB, okay, we have a compression of 1.25. Okay, so we have, for AB, I'm just going to write those down over here, so, just so it's a little more clear. So, for our virtual system, we have FV, okay, and uh, I'm just going to write these down, okay, so for, let's see, let's say for AC, okay, we have 3.75 tension, okay, for F, V of, uh, we'll say, B, C, okay, we have 3.25 compression. And for F, V, so F of uh, the axial force of the virtual system, for A, B, okay, we have 1.25 compression. So those are our forces uh, for the virtual system, okay? Now let's go over to the real system. Let's redraw the truss here. So, okay, we have our truss again. And we, now we're going to include those external loads that we left out from before, okay? And exactly the same thing, pretty straightforward. Okay, we're just gonna find the axial force in each member. So uh, like I said before, I highly suggest that you go through this and do it, uh, do it on your own time and see if you get the same answers, okay? So uh, when, we, when we solve this truss using the method of joints, we're gonna get that this is 62.5 and this is tension. Okay, we have compression of 97.5 here for BC and 37.5 compression for AAB. Okay, so let me write those down for you. Okay, now in this case, as you can see, we're using F. We're not using FV, okay, because now this is the real system. So we're going to denote the real system as F and the virtual system as FV. 
Okay, so those are the first two steps that we need to do. We need to, and those are done now. So what we needed to do is we needed to find the axial force of the virtual system for each member, and we needed to find the axial force in the real system for each member. Okay, and the question, we're given E and we're given A. Okay, so if we take a look at the formula here, this is the formula um, for uh, the deflection at some point uh, using virtual, the virtual work method. So we have the sum of FV, FL over EA. Okay, so FV is these values. F is these values, L is um, just the length of each member, and um, E is given modulus elasticity, area is cross-sectional area, and it's constant throughout. So um, let's go ahead and we'll make a table, okay? So let's make a table now, and it'll be, make it much easier to solve. Cool. So now that we've written this table, this is the, kind of the table that you're going to want to write when you do any virtual work problem for a truss. So uh, we start with the member. So our members are A, B, B, C, and uh, C, B. So we'll say A, B, A, C and BC, okay? Our L is just the length of all the members, okay? So uh, okay, so for AB, we're given L, okay, it's four feet, and we're gonna do everything in inches and kips, so um, we can go with kind of the units of E. So uh, L is four feet, four times 12 is 48 inches. For AC, you're gonna have to calculate these lengths here, okay, but you're given, you know, the uh, you're given the length of the triangle, the base, and you're given the height, so that's no problem. Uh, go ahead and try that on your own. AC is gonna be 180. BC is 156 inches. So for F, F was the force, the axial forces that we found in the real system. So we're going to put those in first, and we're going to consider BC here. This is we found this to be compression and compression. So uh, for AC, okay, 62.5 tension. We're going to take tension as positive. Okay, so AC was 62.5. AB was simply 37.5, and that's negative because it was compression. And for BC, we got 97.5, and that's negative because it's compression. Okay, cool. So now for FV, so the virtual system, same thing. We're going to just fill in. We have AC, that was positive. For AB, it's 1.25, negative for compression. And for BC, we have compression again, 3.25. And then finally, what we're going to do in our last column is we're going to multiply all of these together in each row, and we're going to get a value. And then we can sum all of them, and we have the, uh, the numerator in the formula. We just divide by EA, and we get our answer. Really straightforward. Okay, for the first row, okay, we have negative 1.25 times negative 37.5 times 48. Okay? We're going to get that um, FVFL is 2250. You don't have to worry too much about the units. Just make sure that you're using the same units uh, that you have for the modulus elasticity. 180 times 62.5 times 3.75. Uh, multiply those, we're going to get 42,187.5, and then same with the last row. Now the last step, um, one of the last steps, is simply to find the sum of FVFL. Okay? The sum of FVFL is simply going to be uh, these added together. So 2250, 42,187, and this. And that is going to give us a value of 93,870. Okay, so finally, we're at the end of the question, okay? So the deflection at C, uh, the horizontal deflection, is simply going to be uh, the sum of FVFL, okay, which is 93,870 divided by EA. And we know that we use the same units for everything, so we can just use the same units that are given for EA, so we made our lives easier times 6, okay, and that's simply going to be 1.56 inches, okay, and since we got a positive value here, we know that uh, the direction that we assumed for the deflection was correct, okay, so if we assumed a, a, the different direction for the unit load and we got a negative, for example, then we know that uh, the deflection's in the other direction, but since we know that we have a positive number, we know that our assumption was correct. So that's the deflection at point C, the horizontal deflection. So there you go, guys. Um, you know, try that on your own. Like I said, try the uh, try to find the axial forces on your own, and uh, it's good practice as well. Find the lengths on your own, and do these things before the test because you never know when when something is going to come up. You know, um, that that you find tricky that you can't understand. So go through those steps. I know they seem easy and and, and kind of long, but it's worth it. And if you enjoyed this video, as always. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, let us know in the comments down below what you want to see next. Thanks for uh, watching guys, and take care.